Welcome to the lecture series on reinforcement learning and artificial neural networks. In this video, I discuss Monte Carlo methods. Well, we have seen that the v-value is an estimate of the total reward we can accumulate while we walk through the graph. It's the total expected return with a discount gamma. And now, so one idea would be why using all these TD methods? We can just estimate it directly. So let's play an episode. Let's walk through the graph. So I in state S, I take action A1, I get a first reward. I decide to take action A3 according to my policy, I get a reward. I decide to play action A2 according to my policy, I get a reward, and so forth. So we play an episode until the end. And the summary, the, the graph, the backup diagram is that we start from a starting state and we go until the end of the trial. Good. And then once we have done this, we can just see how much return, how much accumulated reward we got in this episode. And then we play another episode and we average over all the episodes that started in state S. And this average return, total accumulated discounted reward, this average return is then a good estimate of the v-value. There's one more interesting aspect that I would like to point out, and that is while you play this episode, you pass state S prime, and then the total returns on that very first episode after S prime can also be used to estimate V of S prime. And so with these ideas, we are ready to understand the algorithm that's a Monte Carlo estimation of V values. The return is defined as this empirical accumulation of the rewards you get on the fly while you play an episode. So you generate episodes with your policy again and again. And then for each state, not just the starting state, for each state in the episode, you calculate the return and you append this to the list of returns. And then you have, maybe you have played 25 trials that, start, that came through a certain state, S, and at the end, you average over these 25 episodes the re different returns, and this gives the value, the estimated value V of S. So as before, the single episode starting in the starting state as zero, which we state up here, also allows to estimate, to contribute to the estimate of V values of children's states. And so this is Monte Carlo estimation of V values. And of course, you can do the same thing for Q values. Again, it's an average over many returns, over many episodes. And once you have played many episodes, you update. So in that sense, I would assimilate this to a batch algorithm. And as before, a single episode allows to update the Q values of all the states you see on the fly. So this looks like a very direct way to estimate the Q values. Now, in order to add to the list of possible algorithms, let's think of something else. I call this a batch version of expected Sarsa. So as before, you start at different states, like this state S, you start in SA and you play a full episode. And then you start again, you play another full episode. And you start again somewhere else and you play another episode. And now we use the Bellman equation. So we play our episodes with the known policy. So this is known. Now we can use the information we have from our episodes to calculate, to estimate 
empirically this reward, the immediate reward in the first time step after the state that we consider. And then we used, just like in expected SARSA, we use the actual policy to estimate the Q values in the next states. Now, if you have a directed graph where you have terminal states or final states SF, and you run with fixed policy, then you can actually work upwards from the end of the graph, from the terminal states towards potential starting states. And as you do that, you first calculate the estimate rewards or the Q values, the Q values of say this branch and the Q value of this branch. So you have Q values S double prime, A double prime down here. And that allows you to calculate the Q values on these branches here. And then this allows you, now we have Q S prime A prime, and now this allows you to estimate Q values up here, Q of S A. So we have an empirical part to estimate this. And then of course, all these Q values are also empirical from our large number of episode plays. But these Q values are a nice summary of what, whatever happens further down in the graph. So there are many, many different variants of algorithms. How can we organize in our mind these different algorithms? There are different axes. The first axis is whether the algorithm uses batch or whether it uses online. A second algor algorithmic axis is whether we do naive averaging in the Monte Carlo sense or whether we do bootstrapping using temporal difference methods. And for example, the batch Monte Carlo algorithm lies in the plane. It's uh, batch and it's Monte Carlo. It's in this quadrant, quadrant of the plane. However, there's a third axis. We can ask whether we are off policy or on policy. And now the Sarsa algorithm lies in this quadrant a little bit up because it's an on policy algorithm. It's online and it uses the bootstrap, uh, bootstrap TD method, which means it exploits the Bellman equation. So we have three axes. And in fact, there's a fourth axis because we can also distinguish whether an algorithm uses V values or Q values, or maybe even both. So in these four different dimensions, four different axes, we can classify algorithms we can also locate algorithm because it's not always either batch or online. It could be mini batch. It could be a mix between on policy and off policy. So it's really um, a four dimensional space where we can locate algorithms and all these algorithms solve Markov decision problems. We try to maximize the total return. And now, in this video and the previous two videos, we have many, many, we have seen many, many different variants. So now the question is, is there one that's particularly good? And let us now consider three ways to estimate Q values, always with policy P. One is the Sarsa that was reviewed in the very first video of this lecture series today. Then, I discussed in this video the Monte Carlo approach, which is a batch over many episodes. And then, now I say in the last slide, I said that, well, if you have many episodes, then we can sort of directly work empirically with the Bellman equation, and I call this batch expected Sarsa. So we have played n trials, we have three algorithms. How do you think the three algorithms rank? Which one is the best? 
And I want you to make a commitment. If you have a pen, you write down algorithm one, two, or three, or if you don't have a pen, you just raise one finger. If you think it's Sarsa, two fingers. If you think it's Monte Carlo, and three fingers. If you think it's this batch expected empirical uh, Sarsa Bellman approach. Okay, please make your commitment. Here is a little example to answer this question. Suppose we have three starting states and we play five episodes. In episode one and two, we always start in state one. In episode one, we go from state one to four and then to state seven, which is down here. And on this path, the total return is zero. In episode two, we go from one to four to eight. And on this path, the return is 0.4. Then in episode three, we start in state two and we go down two, four, six. So we end up here. And in episode four, we go two, four, eight. And in episode five, we finally start in state three and end up in state seven with a total return of 0.5. Now we can do Monte Carlo average over the total accumulated reward for all these different starting states, uh, S1, S2, S3. Note that the first action is always A1. And you can look at the graph and evaluate this. That gives the expected return empirically estimated after five episodes for each of the three starting states. And then you can do the same thing again for the expected SARSA. And we do use an iterative alter algorithm where the learning rate is eta one for the first time you play a specific state action pair. And uh, for the second time and all other times you use a smaller learning rate, um, which is for example, one half or one third. And now the question is, which is better? If you do that, if you do this little exercise, you will find that expected Sarsa is much better, much closer to the real um, to the real Q values up here. The Q values calculated under the assumption that the policy is balanced. So the equal policy, equal probability for A2 and A3 in state four. So where does the difference come from? Where does the advantage of expected SASA come from? And it comes from the fact that in this state four, you can use all the different, uh, all the different episodes with the different starting states. They all go through uh, this episode A4, uh, this uh, state S4, which allows you to estimate the Q values for state four better than if you just used standard Monte Carlo. And you can also confirm this in simulations. So this is an example from the book of Sutton and Bartow with a random walk on the one, dimen one, one dimensional line. So you just walk randomly in a diffusive fashion, sometimes right, sometimes left, you may return and sometimes you hit the wall and it's only on this side that you get a plus one, on the other side you get a zero. And then you can ask, uh, how quickly do I get the real estimate, which in this way, in, in, for this example, is calculable analytically. Uh, it's a bit of work, but essentially it's a diffusive process. And then you see that these temple difference methods are much better. Why is that? because the temporal difference methods, they exploit the structure of the Bellman equation. And in this way, they can exploit the information that's available at states that are not explored in one specific episode. So the information with the TD methods or Bellman equation based methods is much more efficiently used than with a standard naive Monte Carlo estimate.
to sum this up, temple difference methods are better than Monte Carlo, and the trick is that the averaging step in TD methods, this bootstrap idea, is more efficient to propagate information back into the graph far away from the terminal states, since information from different starting states is combined and compressed in a Q value for each state action pair or a V value for each state. 